Hi, this is Philippe Coval and I'm speaking for Activity Pub Conference of year 2020. Today I will share some experiments where IoT is meeting the social web. So who am I? I'm a software engineer based in France and I've been a long time open source contributor and part of Mozilla Rep program. And I've been involved into open source software with the industry. Uh, I contributed to Tizen operating system for Intel. Then I work on automotive project using Yocto project. And um, my, when I was a Samsung, I work on uh, IoTVT framework from Open Connectivity Foundation. So you can contact me at this address. I share a lot of materials like presentation, video demos, and so on. And I'm available for high, so you can also reach me for any kind of cooperation. So, of course, I'm present on the Finiverse, so you can link me for my updates on Mastodon and watch my video on Peertube. So today, uh, I shared some overview about the technology I've been using and trying to address some challenge about interacting from IoT and social web back and forth with privacy by design in mind. And I shared some proof of concept demonstration and I'd be curious to share some more ideas. And uh, IoT is something which is not that new today, but it started many years ago. I think it's around year 1984, so that's not a joke. Some students uh, connected a vending machine uh, to the internet. So that's something that required uh, DIY and uh, they made it uh, user friendly and to interact with people using the finger protocol that can return the availability of the the in the fridge and uh, it can be accessed to anyone so there were some interesting interaction at the time between people and uh, some hardware and today what is the situation there was a lot of promise and there is a, a market reality so do we have a full interoperability between things or are we still living into silos? This means one vendor that is doing all the processing vertically from the app to the device. Does it uh, handle all our data in a private way? Is it safe? That's a question. Um, and I feel that the social interaction are quite poor. Of course, all devices can be controlled and shared among different users uh, using uh, mobile application instead of remote control that's something good you can also decide uh, some features that can be accessible to some of your users for instance uh, family washing machine not should not be shared to the kids that's for sure but it's acceptable to let them turn on and off the lights that's uh, the kind of social interaction we have today but uh, now I want also to mention about something uh, that I'm a bit, uh, I feel concerned about this because I'm French and so I'm European. And uh, I want to mention about the GDPR regulation is, um, is trying to endorse in this article 25 that uh, the service operator, so other vendors should uh, try to propose services with privacy by design and by default. This is not the case of what I already see uh, today. So that's an opportunity for free software and open source community because privacy is part of our DNA because we are also users and uh, we are uh, targeting um, the user needs, not the market needs first. So that's a challenge to provide uh, some social and IoT uh, services with privacy where users and user data centric is decentralized and resilient, of course. I don't want to sacrifice some feature. So it makes sense to use the web as a platform for this because the web is transversal. You have this uh, uniform location and HTTP protocol to share content. So it can be published statically or and uh, then have some extra programs like JavaScript, but it will run into a browser. So you have some kind of runtime isolation. So we have some privacy features that's part of the web uh, duties, but there are still some concerns because it's programmable. So yeah, that's a challenge uh, to achieve for the for social web, of course, because we have some interaction between people. So privacy matters. There is a lot of uh, pictures of um, 
conversation. You don't want to be exposed. That's something critical, I believe. And it's also critical for the IoT world. So we have this uh, Web of Things working group. We try to link devices together, uh, sensors that provide some value, and actuators to control devices. So what is a Fediverse? Uh, you already know about this, but some people from outside the conference might not. So it's a general term for different use cases like microblocking or sharing uh, media, music and videos. And uh, also you can use um, this for setting up some uh, events and having some decentralized architecture back uh, we had in the beginning of the web because we believe that uh, federation is more ethical than uh, too much concentration of data so this means too much power right so yeah to do this uh, activity pub try to address different use cases so it's based on uh, activity stream semantics in json and what we have in the end we have just an api for Client, client to interact uh, to servers and uh, server to servers. That's uh, how it works. I will not explain too much in detail, but now let me explain about what is a web of things, known as what. So it's a working group from the W3C, the same group that uh, specified uh, HTTP, HTML, XML, and so on, and also Activity Pub. And it's a standard for device uh, to be to be on the World Wide Web, so it's reusing existing technology, which is quite uh, appropriate also for IoT uh, needs. So we have JSON description, REST API, also co-op for uh, like uh, HTTP on UDP, on WebSocket, and extra semantics to express uh, more about uh, what we are dealing with. And something interesting is a sync description. So it was a draft and it has just turned to a recommendation, which is basically a JSON structure defining what is a device, what has the different properties, and how to interact with this. And uh, Mozilla made a, a software called WebSings, which is very inspired by this uh, Web of Things uh, IDs, but it has simplified the sync description. That's something I will explain uh, later. So this is uh, basically how the IoT world is working today. So on our right, we have a cloud operator, which is, provide, which is connected to your device. And you can interact with this operator using different mobile apps. You don't have much API. Most of the time, you just have the app. And all your data is uh, stored on this uh, cloud. So you really need to trust it. Another approach, which is a Mozilla IoT privacy model, so your data stay home. All the devices are connected to a gateway software, and from the which is serving a web uh, UI, which can be reached from a mobile phone or any device, and uh, you can uh, get access uh, remotely using uh, the open internet using a, a HTTPS tunnel, or you just can connect directly to the to the gateway itself. So WebSync smart home platform has been built from with privacy by design from the beginning, and it was inspired by uh, the Web of Things uh, specification, and it also provides a, a framework to build a native Web Things. So basically, they are uh, web servers stalking a REST API, and they are sharing some description using uh, JSON uh, schemas. And uh, you can build those uh, using your favorite language. It can be JavaScript, uh, Python, Rust, uh, C++, on Arduinos, and so on. And it can run on uh, different kind of uh, device. It can be low-end microcontroller to regular systems like uh, Linux or whatever. So all the devices uh, are, are working on the same uh, local network and they are connected together through the WebSync gateway, which is a software running on a Raspberry Pi or any Linux system. And you can uh, use uh, the, the UI from it to control the WebSync from the web browser. It can be on mobile or elsewhere. And it has been designed to be extensible, so you can add a lot of features like add-ons. I will explain about it later. So the challenge is how IoT and social web uh, meet together. So we want to still address uh, privacy by design uh, 
challenge, avoid the data collection from the outside, like uh, we don't want to reproduce what is on the social web, that doesn't make sense. Uh, data should stay home if equal, so it should never go to the cloud, and of course, uh, device should be controlled by users from remotely. So the user should decide what go in and out. So today we just bought some interesting events that was to be shared to the Fediverse, so it can be private or public. Uh, here is a just uh, an earlier demonstration I made. So you get an idea about what is um, this Mozilla web thing. So it's running on, a, on this development board and from the UI dashboard, you can get uh, control to each uh, thing. So here I have a light and I can turn it on and off, of course. So the light is a web thing, and I have also a bunch of sensors connected to this uh, Raspberry Pi where I'm clapping, it can turn on and off the light. I have also uh, yeah, uh, ambient light sensor to turn on the light, and also a uh, temperature sensor, so when it's too hot, I made a rule to give some fresh air to my smart orchid. So that's... Uh, one first concept. So the light is running on this uh, microcontroller. So it's an ASP8266. And I have also a moisture sensor on this uh, Arduino board, which is measuring the humidity percentage in inside the, the ground. So if I remove the sensor, the level should, uh, yeah, it's uh, decreasing. So I have a system which is sending a notification to the Mastodon uh, network telling that uh, when I'm away and my plant are drying, maybe the neighbor can help to water them. So let's get back the sensor on it, put some water, and the sensor should be back to the acceptable value. That's the, uh, the first uh, things I made. So let me explain how I did this. So I wrote uh, a JavaScript module uh, which is just uh, providing JavaScript function matching the Mastodon API. It was developed on Linux using Node.js and then deployed to a microcontroller supporting the IoT GS runtime, which is powered by a JavaScript uh, interpreter, which has very low footprint and can fit into your microcontroller memory. So the source code is online and you get a lot of examples there, like uh, this uh, WebSync version of it. So I made a, an extra program, which is a proxy that translates REST API between uh, Mastodon and WebSync. So the endpoints are different, and uh, of course uh, the, the messages are, are different. So our Mastodon WebSync is just an HTTP server, which is running by IoTGS runtime. It is using the WebSync IoTGS uh, module I wrote, which is based on the uh, Express module adapt for IoTGS, which in the end uh, use a native module of IoTGS. That's how it works internally. So let's uh, use it. So to start it, I made this uh, uh, helper main file, and then if I query the default endpoint of my things, which is running on a different port, I have a description, which is uh, telling that the thing is composed of different properties, like the message properties, which is a string, and which has this property message endpoint. So if I get access to this uh, properties message, uh, or just properties, I get the message value that's the same. But if I want to change it, uh, I have to use this uh, boot verb from REST and uh, HTTP, and then I change the endpoint and give a, a data telling the new value of the message and it will update at the same time. That's very straightforward. So now I can make, do something more advanced using uh, the Mozilla Roll uh, engine of uh, WebSync Gateway. So that's another demonstration. That's mostly the same. I made it at the uh, MOSFEST. So I have the same, same sensor connected to this development board. This is a Arctic uh, 0 5, 5 and it has uh, an analog input which is measuring the moisture of the ground. So then I made uh, some conditional rules that said uh, if the analog input is below a threshold, 
then I said I send a, a message to my Mastodon actuator, which is posting to the network uh, a custom messages. So the rule is turned on. Here are my different things: the analog value of the sensor, and if I just unplug the sensor, the value is decreasing, and then a message should be sent to my uh, account. So yeah, that's straightforward also to use, but um, we can do much more. So yeah. There is no real benefit about uh, hosting this uh, service on a microcontroller because this, uh, we don't have we don't need some uh, extra consumption for these online services. So we can make it run on the gateway. It will work, that's for sure. Since it's running also on Linux, but uh, yeah, it's quite limited still because we can. We need to generate uh, the app token and to hardcode it uh, in the firmware or in the applications. That's not uh, user friendly. So let's rewrite uh, this feature using this uh, add on mechanism, then it can be configured from the browser. So, Gateway is, is uh, extensible with uh, add ons. There are mostly adapters for any kind of protocols like ZigBee, Z Wave, Bluetooth, Low Energy, and so on. But it can also support uh, specific uh, mass products uh, or DIY or any web service that's um, flexible enough. So we have uh, uh, over 100 add ons, and the community is still uh, commit committing more and more. And uh, you can build them using Node.js and Python. And I'm still uh, writing one with Rust also. And uh, let's uh, have a look at this activity pub add on. So you can install the package from this add on repository, then you need to configure it from the web app, and then you can control it as standalone web thing. So it's an actuator to change the value, or it can be a sensor that listens to my timeline. And uh, automation is, uh, is a bit limited. We can do much more, like uh, copy one property to another. So let's say we have a uh, Mastodon sensor, and we are updating a, a display on a LAN matrix. So that's something I can show you running. So here is a web thing gateway. You know about this. You can control each property of each device, like uh, this uh, LAN matrix, which is turned on and off. And then I can uh, add some extra add ons. Like uh, this activity pub, let's install it. So it will download the code from the repository. And uh, once it's installed, uh, yeah, this is a list of all add ons. And I can also show you this uh, sense at add on I wrote for managing this uh, Raspberry Pi uh, sensor and extra hardware. So the add on is installed. Let's configure it. So you need uh, to enter the access token and uh, matching the host name. So if I go back to my uh, Mastodon development menu, I create a new application. So let's give a, a generic name. And then once it's created, let's copy the access token. Trim some extra space. Maybe I can do this uh, in code next. Then you need to enable it. Uh, for some reason, it's a bit long here. So here, I'm showing you uh, this uh, activity pub conference stream. So you can post using this uh, hashtag. And also, at the same time, you can uh, have a look at the source code. I will share this later. So let's add this uh, new thing so we can decide to change the uh, default uh, image, change the name, because actually it's a sensor, it's not only an actuator. So we created uh, the new thing. It should appear on the dashboard. Here it is. And then it has a one string property. So if I'm updating this uh, properties value to a new string, is live or oh, alive, actually. So yeah, it's working. So I can send 
content from the IoT world to the web source. And then I can do much more with this, uh, like a sensor, when I copy the activity p value to the sense light uh, message property. So yeah, as soon as there has been updated, it has been uh, displayed on this uh, matrix LED. So here I have a, a sensor. So if I'm changing my Mastodon uh, status, uh, let's do it from this uh, previous uh, tooth. I will explain this uh, at Activity Pub Conference. So let's get back to my uh, Status and then I can uh, reply to the previous one instead. And said, no, it's not only an actuator, it's also uh, a sensor. So my statue will be updated, and um, then the sensor should be updated at the same time. Let's go back to the properties. So this is a previous value and it's updated at the same time. And we see using this uh, follower add-on, it has been updated on the matrix display. So yeah, if you post to my timeline, it will be updated. You can do this during the conference. I will explain uh, it in uh, more detail. So yeah, more contribution are welcome. So yeah, we can define uh, more usable um, use cases like uh, these uh, flowers uh, and so on. We can improve the OAuth integration to address also also um, uh, activity pub services like uh, the events uh, mobilization, for instance. We can also try to map Fediverse account to gateway users. That can be interesting if you want to share information between uh, family members, for instance. We can do also more processing natural language, like uh, interacting with this uh, add-on uh, chatbot, for instance. Do end-to-end -end encryption if you want to have uh, more privacy with between uh, our different users through the Fediverse. And uh, yeah, any help is uh, welcome, so feel free to reach me if you have some more ideas, that will be interesting. So first summary to sum up, uh, the web is decentralized and extensible for social interaction through the Fediverse. And we can do also target IoT device using Web of Things technology. And Mozilla WebSync smartphone platform can connect all devices in a safe way. And you can also interact with online services through this activity pub add-on. So you can use this um, Mastodon uh, sensor and actuator in uh, as a web thing. That's um, very easy. I hope you can try it. And uh, if you get uh, some feedback, that would be I'm listening also. And you can get uh, source code and uh, file some issue or sending more patches. So thanks everyone. I'm really uh, happy to be at this uh, activity pub conference. I just hope that uh, everyone is fine and family members at the same time. And uh, yeah, the slide and video will be shared online at the same time while you are reading this. And uh, if there is any question, you can reach me uh, on uh, the conference channel or the IRC AP Conf uh, IRC channel on Freenode too. Thanks a lot.